Hey, hey, welcome back to Caspio Live. It's Ned. Uh, if you're able to hear me okay, let's get that out of the way as we normally do so that we can begin. So if you are able to hear me, let me know right away. Something in the chat window and we will begin today's presentation. We had a two week break from Caspio Live. I hope you guys didn't miss the Caspio Live too much, <laughs> but we are back. So if you are able to hear me, somebody just let me know in the chat window. Yep, audible, okay. Thank you for that. Hopefully everyone else can hear me as well. But yeah, welcome back. We have an exciting topic today. I always say that. <laughs> Hopefully you guys find them exciting, but to me they are exciting. Uh, we're gonna be building a an example in the automotive industry, which is more pertaining to insurance. So where um, users can, or customers can log in, uh, get their new car policy, uh, pay for it, and then in the end, they can download the policy and um, download a PDF where we take the data from the Caspio table and we move that data over to our PDF. So this is going directly from the Caspio table and it's printing that data onto our downloadable PDF. Okay, so let me close that for a second. And that's really my example for today. Um, I'm not an expert in this field or this industry. I usually just try to clone or copy what I see in my own account. Uh, it's not exactly built the same way, but for example, like the new policy here, typically you would see this in multiple screens. We divvy up the screen. So when you select your vehicle information, you move on to the next screen where you can select your coverage info. And in the end, you pay for the policy and you can see uh, what your total premium is going to be based on the above selection. So if you put in your vehicle ID, vehicle type, let's say sports car, you can see how your premium is going to change based on those selection. And sometimes you don't even see this number until the very end after you've selected all of your options, which is also fine. Uh, but I wanted to show you how we can calculate in real time. Uh, so if you select maybe Honda Accord, year 2022, let's just say. And let's say the driver is a very young driver. Usually that's going to cost more. The driving record may be clean. Then we have liability coverage. And then you can you know opt in if you want comprehensive uh, collision as well, which I recommend. But then here in the hint, you can see when I roll over, we can see additional information regarding um, what liability coverage means and what comprehensive collision coverage means as well. And in the end, you simply provide the payment info, you submit, and then once you submit that payment, that data is stored in the table, but then when we go back to policies, we're able to see that policy here and I can download that. And now I can just uh, print those ID cards, cut them, have four different copies, and I can put one in my car, maybe one in my wallet, uh, and then, you know, go about my day driving. Um, okay, so that's our example today. We're going to build this solution in today's Caspio Live. I have my template set up where I plan on embedding my data pages. So we have new policy. You can see it's empty and we have policies. And then in my Caspio account, I've already built a few things in my Caspio account uh, just to save on time. Usually we have the table set up. We have the authentication set up. Um, and then we go about building data pages one at a time. Now, one thing that I recommend, so when you're looking at your, you know, fillable PDF that you plan on uploading to your Caspio account, uh, I recommend that you build your table, that you first build your table in Caspio, and then you upload the PDF document into your account. One thing that I always look for inside these fillable PDFs is how is my application going to be structured? And what I mean by that is, if I look at my fields, I see I have company name, company number, I have uh, the insured information, so this is my customer information, and I also have policies. Uh, for example, um, yeah, policy number. So if we look at the, if we think about the application structure, the database design, uh, we know that one company can have many customers, right? It's a one to many. And one customer can have many policies. So we have two tier of one to many relationships, so I would need to have three tables set up, one for company info, one for policies, and one for customers, okay? Because I need to be able to pull information from all three of those tables and copy that information to my fillable PDF when I map out the fields. 
So what I've done inside my account, you can see I have three different tables. I do have a table for company, I have a table for customers, and I have a table for policies. And the way these tables are linked together, so let's take a look at the relationships. So you can see, let me just expand this, give me a second. And I'll go through each one of my tables in just a moment. But we can see that we have a company's table with the company name. And that's tied into our customer table. So we stamp the primary key as a foreign key inside a customer, which is our child table. And now this becomes our parent table. And this is our child table to the parent table. So we have a table of customers with its own unique ID. And then we stamp that customer ID into the policies table so that we can associate our policies back to our customer. Okay, so two tier, one to many relationship and then back inside our tables so if we look at each individual table for my company's table I could have more information here but the reason why I'm not listing more fields in this table is because when I map out these fields to my PDF document it's only asking for the company name and the company number so I chose just to have two fields but of course if you have a need for additional fields you can add them here but for the purpose of mapping out the fields to my PDF there's really no reason for me to list anything more than these two fields. Then we look at our customer table. And the customer table has the unique ID, uh, the company ID, because we need to know which customers are linked to what company. And then you have all of the basic information you would have pertaining to each one of your customers. And I know that the fields that I'm mapping to my PDF document are going to be the first name, last name, and all the address information. And finally, we have our third table for policies. This is more or less the biggest table that I have. Again, we always need to include a primary key in every single table that we create. And then we need to associate the policy back to our customer, right? So we would eventually stamp the customer ID into the policies table. And then you have all the information that you need to collect when you're um, creating your coverage or adding your coverage and policy uh, to your policy. So for example, effective date, expiration date, uh, we have the state field, age, driving record, vehicle ID, all of that information that's eventually going to uh, calculate how much we need to pay for that premium. Now, when it comes to payment, I am not using Caspio's built-in payment processor, okay? Just to speed up on time and also for you guys to be able to download this application and import it into your account. Because if you don't have the payment processors enabled on your account, you wouldn't be able to import this demo. So I decided not to actually have that included, but when you import this application to your account at a later time, if you would like to use it, then you would simply uh, remove these fields and set up your payment processor either through Stripe or PayPal and then connect to your application. Okay. All right, so I think that's it for the tables. And because I'm trying to map information from three different tables inside my fillable PDF, I'm gonna use my view as the data source. Okay, so my view is connecting all three of those tables. So let me show you my design. <clears throat> so I include all three tables. And then you can see I'm using an inner join between my company's table and my customer's table and my customer's table and my policy's table. That way, that way on the view, I can display all the information from all three tables. Okay, and then we're going to use the view as the data source, like I said, when we map out the fields to our fillable PDF. So then if I open the view, just so you can see, we have information from all three tables. I only have one uh, sample data record inside my table, so that's why you only see one row. But this is all the information from all three tables. Okay. And finally, we have the authentication that I've set up in advance. So my authentication is built on top of a directory. Okay, so I have my directory. I'll show you that in just a moment. But you can see I'm using the radio button directory, and then that's all I needed to do. In the advanced settings, I always like to check this box so that when you load the data page on the website, it's showing you the full screen, the login screen, before you log in to be able to see the data pages. Okay, simple setup, and now let's take a look at my directory.
So here is my directory. Let's open it. And you can see I only have one user, one customer. Okay, so there I am. I use myself as the example. And then later on, you'll see how we can log in, submit that form, and be able to download our policy once we're done. Okay. So the next thing, once you set up your tables, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and upload your fillable PDF. And I already have it uploaded, and I'm just going to show you how we map that now to our P uh, fillable PDF. So here is the sample form, sample PDF that I uploaded. We're going to hit edit. And you can see usually these forms come with four different copies because you can, you can map out the fields to all four of these forms. And then when you print that out, you cut it, and you have four different copies that you can use. We're only going to map it out to uh, one of these, you know, but it would be the same process to map it out to all the other ones. So let's maybe uh, scale to fit. So it's a little bit bigger. I can also zoom in more if I wanted to. So my data source is going to be my view. Uh, it would help if I remembered what I called my view. Uh, was it something AI? Um, forgot what I call my view. So let's go back to our applications. <laughs> I called my view AI comp cust. That's a long name. So we're going to just copy that. Okay. Let's go back to our document templates. Let's edit. Let's see if we can find it this way. So I'm just going to search for it. Here it is. Click apply. And now we can map out our fields. So for example, uh, the top one here is the state field. So if I click on that field, let's scale to width to fit. So if I click on that field, mapping type, data source field, and we're going to find our state field that we have. So there's the state field, and that that's that's all you need to do. Now you can just move on to the next field. So company number, let's go ahead and map that out as well, data source. Uh, and I'm using my company ID as the company number, okay? That's the... Um, the primary key and also the GUID that's automatically generated. So we're going to use this as the company ID, uh, company name. And I realized later that I did not create these two fields in my table, but you can make those checkboxes in the table and then the user can select if they want the commercial or personal um, type. Policy number, we have also that field in our policy table. So we're going to find the policy number. There it is. Then we have effective date. Where is my effective date? All right. And then we have our expiration date. And just bear with me for a moment while I map out my fields very quickly. Expiration date. Moving on to the year, make, and model. So we have the year of the vehicle. Uh, where is it? Where is it? There we go. Uh, make and model. So let's do that next. So we're going to put the make in this field and model in that field. So let's do make, vehicle make, vehicle model. Let me take a look at my question. Those map fields look so neat. What app did you use to create that fillable? I actually found this online. I did not create this myself. But there are tools that allow you to create fillable PDFs. This is just something I downloaded randomly off the internet. Okay. Uh, vehicle ID numbers. So we have that, of course. That's inside our policy table, I believe. Uh, vehicle ID number, vehicle ID number. There we go. Um, let's go agency company. So this will probably be the agency company name once again. So we're going to include that too. Company, where is my company name? Here we go. And I guess, see here, I could have included the uh, company address fields too, and I didn't do that. So that's one thing that you could have done here as well. So you'd have the address to the company, maybe city, state, and zip uh, to be ma mapped out to these fields underneath the company name. So that's one thing on the, um, the ID card that I did not create. And then finally, we have the uh, person that's insured. So we have the first name. Or we have the full name. So we can also use the full name of the, uh, the customer. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we have the address. So let's do address. 
All right, and almost done here. We got state zip, city, state, and zip, I mean. So we have the cu customer city, state, and we'll be done. And also, you can hit next field here as well. You don't have to. My, my preference is to just click on the field that I'm trying to map, or if you hit next, you see how it goes to that field immediately. And then we can map this out to our zip code. Customer zip. And now we're officially done. Uh, you would repeat the same steps for the additional four, uh, three cards that we have here so that user can download all of them, cut them out, and use them however they want. That's the uh, typical uh, process. And then we hit save. All right, now that we've mapped out our fields, let's go ahead and build our data pages. So we'll go into our applications. This is my sample today, data pages, and let's build a form first to create our policy. So we need the submission form. We're going to hit next, and that's going to be based off of the policies table. And let's call this create a policy. And then we're going to just use maybe Caspian style and localization will be English. Uh, this is for the aesthetics, the look and feel, and this is for the regional settings. So if you apply the English localization, everything is going to be written in English. But if you want to translate the form to a different language, you could. And also apply some different date formatting rules and um, currency formatting rules as well. Of course, we need to apply the authentication. So that's very important. That's our authentication that we set up. So you have to log in first as a customer before you can submit that form. Hit next. And now, what fields do we need on the form? So we're going to need a lot of these fields. OK, so let's go ahead and um, uh, let's have the customer ID, effective date, state, driving record, vehicle ID, limited, car number, expiration. So it looks like we're going to need all of these fields on our form and hit next. I'm not going to spend a time modifying each field to make it look nice. I could. Uh, today is really all about functionality, just so that you can see that everything works the way it's supposed to. Um, but I leave up to you to modify your own uh, look and feel because everyone has their own unique style that they like. And of course, it has to complement your website template as well. So that's important. So if you have specific colors on your website, uh, you want to make the form uh, be cohesive with the website. So modify the labels and fields however you want. Now, the customer ID, we don't want this to be visible on the form. So we want to make this field hidden and use the authentication method to stamp the user's ID. Okay, so when I log in as, let's say, customer Bob or customer Mary, we already have their unique ID in the customer table. We just simply automatically stamp that ID into the policies table because we already have that information. So we make the field hidden and use the authentication field user ID to stamp inside the policies table. Effective date, this can be a timestamp. Okay, so this is when the policy will begin or when the policy will start. Now, expiration date, I should have done a little bit differently. Now I realize that um, during our live stream that this is not the way this is supposed to work. We can use a formula field later on to calculate, um, to add additional, like it, let's say you're uh, adding a policy for six months or a year, 12 months, you know, it, it will calculate differently based on that information. So I made a mistake here, actually. Expiration date, I cannot use in this example because the customer doesn't set the expiration date. They just have a field that they can choose if they want to pay monthly, uh, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually, right? So this is my mistake, um, something I should have fixed prior to our call today. So we're going to exclude this field today, okay? Let's remove it. Uh, let's see, for the state field, now we already have the state field of the customer, so that's in the customer table. So again, we can hide this field and use the authentication field state to automatically stamp that into the policy. For age, this is going to be a dropdown. And I'm not going to include every single option that I had in my live example, because you can see that would take forever. So if I, for age, if I list all of these, that might take a while, you know, so we're going to include maybe one or two. So for age, you can have a dropdown. And for display, we can say maybe 16 to 20 years old. And you will end up paying maybe I don't know if you're a young person, you end up paying a $400 premium okay, for that age group. Now, this field, you can see my data type is set to number. Display doesn't matter what you, can, you, what you do. You can have a hyphen here, 16 to 20, but the value has to be a number because that's the, that needs to be stored in the table as the actual number. Okay? 
And let's have one more. Um, 21 to maybe 28. That's going to be less because you're a little bit older. Hopefully you don't make as many mistakes. <laughs> we all know when we were younger, we were uh, very uh, energetic and wanting to uh, speed all the time. At least I was. But hey, I'm much more calm these days when it comes to driving. I don't drive as spirited as I used to. All right, driving record. Okay, let me just add a little space here. So this is also going to be a drop down. And let me just see what I did in my live example. So clean speeding accident DUI. All right. So we have clean record. Uh, maybe we pay nothing for that. Let's have speeding. That'll be additional $100. And maybe DUI, uh, additional $400 if you've had that. Uh, vehicle ID is going to be a required. In fact, all of these are going to be required fields. Um, one thing that I would add here is usually at the very beginning of your drop down, you want to say select. And if you choose that, let's just have it as a zero, but it's a required field. Um, driving record, same thing. This can, this can actually be by default set to clean. That's fine. So the user has to change it. Uh, let's see, vehicle ID is going to be a required field, vehicle type. So vehicle type, we have a drop down here as well. So if it's a sports car, maybe you end up paying an additional $200 for that. If it's a sedan, not as fast of a car, maybe $50. And if it's, I don't know, maybe an SUV, $100 or something like that. All right, vehicle make. So that's going to be a required field. All of these, again, are required fields. Vehicle make, um, Honda, Kia, whatever car uh, manufacturer you want to go with. Uh, vehicle model, also required field. Vehicle year, required field. Uh, liability coverage, what am I doing for liability coverage? So let's see, we have state minimum, 1500. Okay, so let's come back here. So that's a drop down, and we're going to say state minimum. That's going to be maybe, I don't know, 200 extra. And these are all fictitious number, arbitrary numbers. I am not using any real actual data. I'm just making things up. So let's just do 50, 150. And then maybe uh, we have a deductible here. Let's just do 500, I think. And then we might have 100. Oops. 300 policy. So this is about miles, right? 50,000 miles, 100,000 miles, uh, 300,000 miles, and I don't know, 1,000. And then you can add a comprehensive collision as well if you want to. Maybe that's not a required field because sometimes when you're creating your policy, you don't have to add comprehensive, comprehensive collision, even though I, I personally recommend that you do. Uh, unless it's a really old car and you don't really care about it. But um, And then total premium, I actually used a virtual field for that. Now I realize that you can also create a formula field. So if you want that total to be saved in the table, create a formula field inside a table and then build it um, as a calculated field here on the data page. So you can still see the total in real time. But when you submit the form, you get that total to be stored in the table as well. For me, I'm just doing a uh, here on the fly as a virtual field just to show the user uh, that calculation. But you can definitely have that calculation be stored in the table as well. So that's going to be a calculated value. And my formula, maybe I should just copy my formula from the other one that I have so that we don't, but it's a simple one. We're just adding things. So why don't we just do is null. So let's find is null. Okay. So, oops. Let me add an additional parenthesis here. So we're going to insert our all the ones that are giving us the calculations, right? So age plus driving record, that also has a value tied to it, plus uh, driving record we used, vehicle ID, vehicle type, vehicle type, yep, yeah, because it could be a sports car or an SUV. Let's have another plus for liability, I believe. Yeah, liability coverage. And then if you had the comprehensive, you would add that as well. I, I did not modify my dropdown, but you would uh, modify that dropdown as well if you had something. Um, but let's, 
Let's do that for now. And then we're going to just simply say comma zero, because if it's empty, I want to replace that with a zero. And I want to format this as a currency so that I can include a dollar symbol in front of my, uh, my number just to make it look nicer. And then we're going to just say zero digits after the decimal. Hopefully that looks good and works well. For status, we're going to make this field hidden because once I pay, provide my credit card information, I want to automatically change the status or update the status as paid. Uh, so card type is going to be required. And here you can list this to be a drop down. You can say select, delete the value, and then just simply put in Visa, MasterCard, and any other card you want. Card number is going to be a required field, security code required field, and expiration date required field as well. All right, let's hope everything goes well. We're going to hit finish to save. And let's grab our data page and deploy that to our website. We'll grab the embed code. And I'm going to go to my Notepad++ and replace my placeholder text with the script. Save it and let's upload it. I should have had this opened up. Let me log in, just bear with me for a second, oops. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, go to our folder that contains all of my files. Let's go into the root folder here and find what's called a AI Live, AI Live folder, here it is. So I've just copied and pasted my embed code to this uh, web page called New Policy. So we're going to move that page over to the right. And let's test it out. So if I go to New Policy, I will be asked to log in first because we have our authentication. So we're going to go NetP at customer.com. We're going to log in. And there's my form. So hopefully some of these actually work so we can test this out. So age 16 to 20. Uh, and it's not updating my value here. We're going to take a look at that in just a second. Speeding and also not update. I had this issue before. Let me see how I fix this. Give me a second. So for age, we have custom values. Uh, okay. Select is going to be um, empty here because it's a required field. So there's no reason for that to be zero. Um, because I need to select something. So if I change this, it should update it to 400. Let me see. Oh, can't remember what I did to fix that. Give me a second. Let me go into my other application real quick. Um, let's see, auto insurance. I had the same issue before, but I don't want to waste time trying to figure it out. So let me see, age. Age. I did have a zero there. Made that field required and then in my virtual field, age plus, so it should show up. Age. Okay. Interesting. Uh, let's come back. Data pages. Age, required field zero, but if I change it, it should update my formula as well. But for some reason, it's not updating my formula. So age plus driving plus vehicle plus plus that. Is it because of my, oh, because of my collision coverage, I need to modify this as well. They all need to have a zero in order for the formula to work. So let me just add something here really quickly for my uh, comprehensive collision. So I remember now. So let me just see what I did here. Oh, the deductible comes over here. Okay. That's my mistake. So we have 500 deductible and 1000 deductible. So we will say a drop down. Let's do um, 500 deductible. And then we'll just say, I'll just put 500 as the value. And then we'll do um, 1000 dollar deductible 1000 and I'm pretty sure I'm going to add a select here as well and put that as a zero because they all need to carry a value let me just make sure they all do so this one has a statement let me just include everything to have a select 
Let's start off with a zero here so that we have just a clean slate. Okay, so vehicle, model, type, select, zero. Let's move that to the top. Vehicle ID. Okay, that looks good. Age looks good. Let me try this now. It should work. So let's come over here. Refresh. All right, so I need to include a... Um, I need to have this be set to default. So it goes down to zero. Give me a second. Yeah, so it goes down to zero. So if I select age, it's going to add to 500, I believe. I don't know what I had here. I believe it was 500. I also don't know why we're having so much lag now. This normally doesn't happen, but sometimes it does. Let me try to do control F5, but you can see how it added it to the virtual field. So if I choose speeding, there it is 500. If I choose vehicle type sports car, you can see how it's adding now to my premium. And in the end, when you make all of your selections, so let's say the vehicle ID, this is the vehicle ID, uh, vehicle type, vehicle make, let's do, let's do a Tesla model, um, model three, uh, vehicle year 2020, liability coverage, let's do 50, 150, comprehensive, 1000 deductible, car type visa, we're gonna add a random number here, security code and expiration date. Let's have the future date be hit submit. And one data page that's left to build, we're gonna build this one very quickly, is now for us to be able to download that policy and print out our insurance ID card. So we're gonna set up our second data page. Reports, let's go with the tabular format, policies table, and we're gonna call this uh, manage policies. Style is gonna be Caspian style, English localization, restrict access, hit next. No need for a search form uh, because, you know, I don't suppose we're gonna have too many policies over, I don't know how many years you go with that insurance company. So let's just filter our data. Let's just display all the policies. You definitely want to enable RLS because you need to be able to see your own policies. You don't want to be able to see some other customer's policy. So set up your RLS, hit next. And do we want to filter our records by any field? I don't think we need to do that. Let me just think for a second. Why don't we filter based on the status field so it equals to paid? Just in case in the future, if you have a policy that you started, but you didn't pay for yet, you can have it be in progress. And then later on, you can edit that policy and pay for it. So, but we want to be able to filter out just the paid ones uh, at the very top. Hit next. And now let's see what information we want to display. Policy number is good to have, uh, effective date. And normally you would have the expiration date, uh, expiration date there as well. Unfortunately, I did not set that up. Uh, let's see what else we have. We want the vehicle make model and year and I don't think I need to display any more information maybe vehicle ID but I think that's good enough for now we're gonna hit next next and now in the results page let's include generate PDF oh I know why because I need to use my view as the data source my mistake so the data source needs to be my view in order for the PDF to work, because all of my fields are inside um, that, that data source, okay? The company info, the customer info, and policy info. So in order for me to generate that PDF, I need to use this as the data source. So yeah, that's one little error I made. Let's hit next. Everything else is gonna be set up the way it was. So customer ID to customer ID. Uh, filter based on the status field. So let's include that as well. So it needs to be paid. Hit next. And then on the results page, like I said, we want the policy number. Let's have the um, vehicle information. So maybe vehicle make, model, and year. And then you would have the expiration date and effective date. Hit next. Next. And now just modify your labels a little bit on the results page because when you create the view, it carries over the name from the other table. So you would just modify the labels. So it's cleaner. And then finally, we can add the generate PDF. 
Let's move that down here. And what I will do for my label, download ID card, document template. Yep, that's correct, file name. Um, why don't we have it open up in the browser? And let me see what information I have here for custom. So link download ID card, that's what I want my link to say. And for the icon, since I'm opening this up in a new tab, usually the icon for that would be, maybe this one here would be good. But let's have this icon. Hit next, let's display 25 entries. Hit next, and no need for a details page right now. Let's hit finish, and let's deploy our data page. We're gonna grab our embed code, copy it, come over here, and then for policies, we're gonna replace the placeholder text, save, and let's see what it looks like. Oops. I went to a different folder. AI Live. All right, policies. Move that to the right, and let's try it out. Okay, so I have two records inside my table. I have my one that I used previously, and now we have the Model 3, which we paid for. And then I can download my ID card that's gonna open up in a new tab and there's the information all listed inside there. Now, if you had mapped it out to the other ones, you would have the same information mapped out to the other ID cards. You can print that out, cut it, and use it inside your card. So that was uh, the use case that I came up with today to use fillable PDFs. Um, and then, you know, as I always say, take a look at your fillable PDF first, right? Understandable fields you have inside that fillable PDF document. And based on the fields you have, you may have to set up some relationships because you could be possibly you could be mapping out fields from multiple tables. So build the tables first with all the fields that you need, the required fields, and then upload your fillable PDF and then start mapping out the fields to your fillable PDF. And sometimes you may have to use a view and other times you may have to use related tables inside that PDF setup um, to bring data in from multiple tables. So you have options either to use the view or related tables when configuring your fillable PDF. But that's the use case we had today. Hey, Steven, been having lag in Caspi all day. I'll take a look at your, yeah, let me relay that information over to our team to find out. Um, can you send me an email directly as well? I just want to make sure everything is okay. I don't think that we're having any. Yeah, be, so July 12th, yeah, there are no downtimes happening today. So I'm really, oh, actually, except for this one, site three. But it was one minute and then it fixed itself in site two. So yeah, we're at the mercy of AWS as well. So if unfortunately, uh, if something's happening with AWS, because that's where all the data is hosted. Um, but yeah, send me an email, Stephen, if you don't mind. I'll take a look and I'll email you back and find out if there's anything happening that I'm not aware of. Okay, I hope you enjoyed today's topic. I tried to find a decent use case. Um, I couldn't find... I mean, I, I guess I could have researched to see how else we can use fillable PDFs, but this is the one that came to mind because it's fresh in my mind because I had to um, pay for my insurance recently. So I figured maybe I can try something like this. It's a real life use case. So um, it may not relate to what you're looking to build. It probably won't relate because everyone has a different use case and different uh, application they're, de they're developing. But same thing, even with like tax documents, you know, W9 forms, W2 forms, you can map those out. And those forms you can actually download uh, from the government's website. They're available, they're free to download, and then you can upload them to your account and start mapping out the fields. And if you need something more custom, then you can use one of those um, generators that allow you to build these fillable PDFs. I've never created one myself, but I have seen tools out there that allow you to do that. Sounds good. So this is a good way to get data from our clients. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Or for them to download and archive um, information onto this onto the PDFs. So. 
All right, I hope you enjoyed it. Next week, we're going to be building an expense tracking application for companies. So um, if organizations have a need for something like that, that's what we're building from, from start to finish. So we're going to have an HR team approving these expenses. We're going to have employees, management. You know, if you're traveling, if you need to get reimbursed for something, you can, you know, create an expense. And then it goes all the way to the HR uh, to finalize and approve that expense and then you get reimbursed for it um, at the end of the month or in th at the end of the week whenever uh, your paycheck is due. So that's what we're building next week. We're going to tackle that whole entire application, uh, build all the data pages. I don't know how many we're going to have. I haven't built out the app yet. <laughs> I built a similar expense tracking application for um, on the consumer side where public can sign up and track their own expenses, but this is going to be more focused for organizations where you have departments, you have teams, and then you can roll that up in a department and see all the expenses for the sales team, marketing teams, and some dashboards and analytics. And yes, we will have many more data pages <laughs> in that application compared to what we built today. But today's live stream was mainly about fillable PDFs and how you can upload them to Caspio and then start mapping out the fields of the database tables. And via the data page, you can download these PDFs uh, from a customer perspective or some other way uh, that you make it accessible to your end user. All right, so I won't hold you up anymore. Thank you for attending. I appreciate your attendance and we'll see you next Wednesday. All right, take care and have a good rest of the week.